All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, so Shelly, I think I heard you say you took your clients out looking at property this weekend. How'd that go? Um, I don't have anything accepted. Not yet. Not yet. That's okay. I've been showing them for a while. Yeah. Have you? Okay. Yep. I know it's, it's, um, it is a, it is a tough market out there. Um, especially for our buyers, you know, of a specific price point and probably being, you know, picky themselves, um, and or not, to be honest with you, they don't have to be picky, but it's, it's, it's competitive out there right now. Um, and in some areas, it is more competitive than in others. Um, and it's weird to me a little bit. Um, like I told you guys, my husband and I are looking for a property, right? And we are seeing that, like in Corona, a lot of competition in Corona. Um, Ontario, on the other hand, has a lot less competition, Um and those home prices and those folks are staying on the market longer than um, in, in Corona. Um, and it's only certain areas in Ontario, like one house will fly off the market, the other house won't. Um, and you look at the houses and it's not that much difference. It is really, it's a really weird type of phenomenon going on right now. Um, something that I'm really following closely because we really are trying to make some sense of it. You know, to me, our business is very logical. It's supply and demand. Um, and so we really are trying to make sense of it from a numbers perspective because it should definitely make sense. Um, but hang in there, Shell, hang in there with your clients. You know, you know that it will happen. Um, and and they're going to be extremely grateful for your services and for your representation. Um, so you guys, Thank all you. of you, you're welcome. Absolutely. All of you hang in there, Diana, hang in there with the open houses. Kim, I know you've been doing open houses with Letty. You guys hang in there. Cameron, hang in there. I know right now you got a transaction that, um, we were conventional and then, um, we had to go FHA, uh, because of, um, something that was found in public record by the underwriter kind of at the 11th hour. Uh, this is just a lesson I'm sharing because it's a lesson for everybody. Um, the client had a bankruptcy that was not on the credit report because you guys reverse mortgage bankrupt. I'm sorry, reverse mortgage foreclosures, not a bankruptcy. Reverse mortgage foreclosures do not show up on credit reports. OK, so that's a question that we might if we have a client that's got parents, older parents. Uh, you might want to ask them to make sure that there's none of that going on because the underwriter, you guys, they will find this stuff out. This is their job to cross the T's and dot the I's. And they did that and found out that there was this issue here. Um, and now um, we cannot go conventional. We have to go FHA. Well, if you guys know the process, then you know that in order to go from conventional to FHA, we have to redo the appraisal because we can't use the conventional financing appraisal we have to get an fha appraisal um so we have to do that and we have to go back through the approval process right so we just added um days on a transaction that was scheduled to close this week um yeah this week or early next week so um but cameron has been wonderful during the transaction very on top of things um and um and he, he's kind of where i'm training him and he's doing he's just doing a great job uh, with managing it all. But we did have a convert. We had to have that hard conversation with the lender. I mean, sorry, with the uh, the listing agent on Friday. And of course, it's like, you know, what do we say? And I told Cameron, I said, you just be completely transparent and honest because this was not something that we could foresee or the lender. So this is something that, you know, it's just a it's just one of those things in real estate that it happens. And so we had to talk to him and I, and he was like, how could this, you know, happen at the 11th hour? And, you know, he was, he was upset. And, and we, I assured him, I said, this is not something that we could have foreseen. This is not something that is negligence on anyone's part. Uh, and I, and I apologize. And, and I said, but we are doing everything we can. And we want to be completely transparent with you and open and honest, which is why we're telling you now, we, we just found out and we are calling you first. Um, so at the end of the conversation, he seemed like he was a little less irate or a little less upset. 
Um, what did you think, Cameron? I think um, after our conversation, he did seem to, you know, um, calm down and we were able to placate him um, to kind of give us more time. Yeah. Um, so I, I really appreciate you for just kind of like using the right words and verbiage to, 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 you know, settle his nerve. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think open and honest communication with our team um, and the other agent on the other side of the transaction is a part of your team. It's necessary. You've got to do it. Um, and the more that you keep that open line of communication during the transaction, the better off you will be if things come up because they'll trust you and they'll know that you guys are working together to create that win-win situation. So, um, so let's go ahead. I'm sorry, that was like a tangent, but I, I love sharing those moments because you guys will be able to use that down the line in your business. You know, if you have a transaction or if you have a situation, it may come up and you'll remember it and be like, okay, you know, I remember this happening. Um, and if nothing else, you'll be like, well, I, I know Cameron and Brandy dealt with this, so let me call. All right. So let's go. Our weekly update, guys. We are in the second week here of July. Um, wonderful. It's moving right along. Um, and I want to share with you guys that this is the second half of the year. It is time. If you have not started to just rev it up, get busy, you got to rev it up. Because remember, when November hits, you guys, everything slows down. Okay? Okay. When November hits, everything slows down. So you've got July, August, September, October. You got the next four months to really kick it into high gear with your lead generation, with your um, follow-up. Kick it into high gear because things start to slow down in November and you want to be set by the time November hits. You want to feel like, okay, if things do slow down, I've met my goals or I'm really, really close to my goals. Um, and so, you know, do your very best to create a schedule that is going to, um, support you in kicking up your lead generation activities. Okay. Create a schedule that's going to support that because if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist. All right. So you guys know to be TCPA compliant, do not reach out to people that are on the do not call list because you will get your hand slapped. Um, we don't want any of that. And they slap hands hard. They not like, you know, when you, when you, when you like slap somebody's hand and you just playing, uh, uh, they, they slap hard. It's called fines and they, they get you for thousands of dollars. Right. So can I ask a quick question on that? Yes, please. Did we find out if we can, if we're, how do we put a number into the do not call us and to figure out if it's on that list or not? When I went in to do it, it required that I have an account and I don't have one. So could you create an account though? I think I have to be an organization, but I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. I, we don't have one at KW. Not that I'm aware of, um, but I know Jorge should have one. Uh, oh. Yeah, Jorge, our, our title company should have one. Um okay. And when you, it, to me, Doris, it depends on the source. How did you get the number? Jorge. So Jorge's list should be scrubbed. And if he tells you that it is not, please tell me. No, he didn't. He didn't. I was checking with him. The only thing is some of these, those lists change, don't they? And I've been mm -hmm. holding on to it for a couple of months. So I'm just worried. Am I, I'm looking at old information. Should I recheck it? I mean, that kind of. I will find out for you, Doris. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. This is Eileen. How are you, everybody? Good morning, Eileen. Happy Monday. Um, to pitch in a little bit more on this do not call list, it is required for every agent to create their own account. And maybe that's something that we can actually help all agents set up during a tech class. And I do have my own individual account. Because oh, we don't know where to create an individual. Okay. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Thank yeah. you. So um, go ahead. I'm going to put my email on the chat and you can shoot me a quick note and I'll reply with the instructions how to create your account to the uh, do not call that gov website. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. 
Thank you so much, Eileen. All righty. So now we got the answer to that. So we each of us need to have our own account. Um, and then at the end of the day, that's how you would check Dora. So definitely um, get Eileen's email from, um, from the chat and she can help you with walking through that. Will do. Thank you. All righty. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? No? All right. Let's keep pushing forward then. So Los Angeles County sales trends, you guys, we are looking at the for sale properties, properties that are actually on the market right now, um, has gone up over last month, 4.2%. Um, and properties, and, and then over last year, 33.6%. So LA County is definitely seeing a surge in new inventory and um, more sales, more for sale inventory than we did last year, which is really great, right? Because we are in such an inventory shortage that we definitely need more um, sellers to be on the market. And basically in LA County, we are 33.6% higher than we were last year. So that's really good. Now, sold properties has, has gone up 1.9% over last month and has gone up only 1.2% over last year which is still good because again, at least we're seeing gains and not decreases. So LA County sales has gone up 1.2% over last year at this point in the year, halfway mark, right? Pendants went down 20.7% over last month um, and then has gone up 1.4% overall. So compared to last year, 1.4% increase. So that's properties that have gone into escrow. So again, the three, three out of three major um, trend lines in LA County um, is actually um, in the green. So that's a great sign for LA County, all right? And then we'll we'll look at the others. So look at this new listing inventory, brand new listing inventory has gone down 49% over last month, okay? So we had a surge of inventory last month. This month, not so much. But now I would suggest to you that beginning of summer, we typically do see inventory come on the market, right? Um, because everybody's been waiting for the kids to be out of school and all of that. So we typically do see a surge. Um, so that's why maybe July, yeah, it, it hasn't hit so much um, because, because all those people who were waiting went ahead and put their properties on the market in the beginning of the month. So let's look at overall, as compared to last year, a 15% increase. So new listing inventory has still increased 15% over last year, which is great in LA County, okay? Our active sales price has gone down 1.1% over last month um, and has gone down 5.2% over last year. So sellers in LA County are asking 5.2% less than they did last year, which if you listen to any news um. Uh, media, um, any of that, um, you're going to hear that prices are soaring, prices are soaring, right? Uh, the reality is, is in LA County, on average, right, that the prices have actually gone down 5.2%. And what they're receiving, so they're asking 5.2% less, they're receiving 4.5% higher prices or higher value than they did last year. So even though they're, they're asking 5.2% less, they're getting 4.5% higher. The reality is, is that that's still a very normal amount of appreciation, right? Still a very normal amount of appreciation. So that is definitely a good thing. Um, prices aren't soaring in LA County. Prices are having normal appreciation, right? So we could definitely give um, a different viewpoint. And of course, this is where we got to be hyper local because maybe in certain cities in LA County, prices are higher, are going up really high. And there's a lot of competition, no doubt about that, right? So we got to get hyper local so that we know what area applies to what. All right. Months of inventory, no change over last month. We had 2.7 months of inventory last month. We have 2.7 months of inventory this month. And remember, you guys, when we're looking at the month over month trend line, we are looking at month to date. So we're looking at uh, July 1st to July 6th compared to June 1st to June 6th, right? So that's only six days of data, right? Not, not, a, not a big sample size just yet, okay? All right. And then this is the um, current month 
versus last year's month, right? So there's a 12.9% decrease compared to this year, July, first six days of the month, and last year, July, uh, at that six days of the month. We had 3.3 months of inventory last year in July. We have 2.7 now. Uh, however, overall, it's a 29.2% increase. So we had 2.1 months of inventory last year at this time of year. We have 2.7 months of inventory currently. So that's a good sign. Um, LA County um, is one of the higher uh, areas, one of the higher counties in months of inventory. If you look at um, Orange County, as we're going to see, they're in the one months of inventory. So we'll see that. Um, but definitely we, we are climbing just a little bit. I think last, we ended the month last, last um, week. It actually was 2.8 months. I think we were a little bit higher. All right, mm -hmm. average days on market has gone down 7.4% over last month. Um, we were at 27 days on market last month. Yes. We are at 25 days on market currently. Let me see. Um, I'm probably if you guys um aren't muted, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that I'm that I'm gonna mute you just in case, just so that we don't have a bunch of background noise. Um and then if you have questions or want to make a comment, you know you can. So please unmute yourself, but I'll keep you muted and, and you know, unless you do want to make a comment. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Average days on market has gone down overall 13.9%. We were at 36 days on market last year. We are at 31 days on market currently. So you, it is going down um, because obviously good homes, the good homes, good neighborhoods, um, homes that are in great condition, just certain factors, right? Uh, those are going to pop off the market fast, all right? So definitely um, 31 days on market. Houses are typically staying on the market. If it's a great house, if it's in the neighborhood, if it's got a great condition, you need to get there fast, all right? Because it's not going to last 31 days. Don't let these numbers fool you. It will not last 31 days. Remember, LA County is huge, so it is looking at a huge amount um, all right got that done sorry about that all right yeah. stay muted guys please especially if you're in a noisy place all right sold versus original list price has gone down two percent over last month we were at 100 sellers were getting 100 percent of list price last month first six days of the month they're getting 98 percent of list price currently um still a great great number um, overall, it's gone up 1%. So last year, sellers were getting 97% of list price. Now they're getting 98% of list price. Sellers in LA County are still very happy, right? They've got low days on market. They've got, um, they're getting 98% of their list price. And again, as listing agents, we control that. We can, we can have influence on what that listing price is and get them closer to 100, 101% of their list price. All right, so let's keep it pushing. Let's move on to Orange County. So Orange County, OC is always a little bit different. So for sale properties has gone up 9.2% over last month. Um, we are up 24.3% over last year, same time frame in, um, in July. And then overall, we are up 24.3% on for sale properties, properties that are active on the market right now. All righty. Sold properties is up 1.8% over last month and up 4.4% over last year. So really properties that have closed um, escrow has gone up 4.4%, which is great. Um, we are not in the negative. So we are, we want to keep those positive gains. Um, and it's also great, I didn't say it, but it's great that we're seeing inventory increase um, in Orange County, 24.3%. Again, Orange County, as you'll see as we go through this, um, has the least amount of inventory. So to see any gains, especially 24.3% is great. We need to see more because in Orange County, definitely um, demand is outweighing supply, okay? And you'll see that as we look at these numbers. So pended properties has gone down 15.8% over last month and up 4.6% overall. So pended properties, properties are actually in escrow has gone up 4.6%. I'm happy to see we've got all three of our three major indicators are in the green um, for Orange County, which is, which again is great. 
New listing inventory went down 61.3% over last month. Remember, just the first six days uh, of the month. Uh, down 47.4% over last year, same six days in July last year. However, overall, we are up 11.9%, all righty, on new listing inventory. So that is great. We are seeing gains in new listing inventory over last year um, at this stage in the year, first six months of the year. All right, average active price has gone up 1% over last month. Um, 6% over same time over over the same time frame in July last year um, and up 6% overall. So the average active price in Orange County has gone up 6%, which means that the sellers are asking, right, 6% higher prices than they did last year, which for Orange County, you guys, is great because last year when we were doing these numbers, Orange County was asking like 30% higher. It was crazy. Um, now, let's look at what they're receiving. They are receiving 14.8% higher than they were last year, okay? So Orange County, if your, sell, if your buyers are looking in Orange County, what does this mean for them? That yes, the asking price may be 700,000. Your buyer will more than likely have to come up, okay? And actually pay over asking price. More than likely, there's going to be competition. More than likely, they're going to have to compete, okay? Because although sellers are only asking 6% higher, they're receiving 14.8% higher than they did last year, okay? So they're definitely have some significant gains um, in appreciation, some double-digit gains in appreciation. And that has a lot to do, again, with the fact that um, demand definitely outweighs supply. Look at this, we, as we're, I was alluding to earlier, no change in uh, months of inventory, 1.7 months of inventory last month. We're still sitting at 1.7 months of inventory currently. A 20.8% increase. However, um, over last year, we were at 1.4 months of inventory last year, and we're, we are at 1.7 months of inventory currently. So what does this mean? This means that if we were to stop putting anything on the market um, right now, inventory would sell out in 1.7 months, which is like that, right? Um, and, and so the reality is, is that Orange County has just very low inventory among all the counties is probably, it, it is the lowest, okay? Which is why they're receiving such higher prices um, because there's, there's that bidding going on in Orange County, more so than probably any other county, okay? Average days on market, a 5.3% increase um, over last year. So we were at 19 days on market. Uh, I'm sorry, over last month. We were at 19 days on market in June, first six, day, first six days. Uh, we're at 20 days on market currently. Okay, not, not a big change at all. Um, a 30.3% decrease overall because last year, this time frame, we were at 33 days on market. And currently we are at 23 days on market. Okay. So the reality is, is that um, the reality is, is that we have a shortened amount of time um, in order to get your buyers into the properties in Orange County because the days on market is really short. OK, and remember, 23 days on market includes their marketing. It includes counters, the offers being received, counters being done. That's an entire 23 days. So more than likely, the marketing time frame is seven days. OK, and you got to get your offer in to be included in that in that consideration period. OK. All right. So versus original list price, four percent decrease over last um, last month. OK, last month, sellers were getting 100 percent of their list price. Currently, it's at 96 percent of list price. Again, this is just for the first six days of the month. Overall, a 2.1 percent increase because sellers were getting 97 percent of list price last year. And currently they're getting 99% of the list price, which again, sellers in Orange County are happy. They're getting 14% um, um, appreciation and they're getting 99% of their list price, which in a lot of areas in Orange County, I'm sure they're getting more than that, okay? All right, so let's keep pushing through Riverside County. Things get to me a little more reasonable when we talk about Riverside, San Bernardino County. 
Although what we are seeing is a trend, that migration trend from Orange County and from um, and from LA County, we're seeing that migration trend that they are moving out. And that creates, like I told you guys, that creates um, a lot of competition in those areas, uh, which then drives up prices, right? So Riverside County for sale inventory has gone up 1.9% over last month. 39.1% um, overall increase. So properties that are active on the market for sale right now um, has gone up 39.1%. So that's a big increase over last year, um, almost 40%. So that definitely is a big increase. Sold properties has gone down 5.9% um, over last month. I'm sorry, has gone up 5.9% over last month. Um, that sold properties, properties that actually closed escrow and have gone down 0.9% over last year overall. So just a slight downtick of 0.9%, um, very nominal, but still in the red, all right? Um, on sold properties, properties that actually closed escrow. So we definitely are seeing a downtick. And it's a little weird, right? Because we have so much um, gains in inventory. So there's for sale properties out there, and yet they're not closing escrow, right? Um, and a lot of that has to do more than likely with the interest rates and people sitting on the fence, but also the fact that Riverside County is a little farther out. So, you know, it doesn't get as much demand as you would in Orange County and LA County. Okay. Pendant properties um, is down 3.7% um, over last month and an increase of 2.1% over last year. So properties that have actually gone into escrow has gone up 2.1%, not much, but still in the green. So two out of the three major trend lines in a Riverside County are still in the green. And even our sold property um, uh, trend line is, is slightly under. And again, we look for it to rebound in June, July, August, our summer months. Um, we look for it to rebound. Hopefully the um, sales will actually take up for the losses. Okay. All right. So. New listing inventory has gone down 37.9% over last month and has gone up 14.4% overall. So that's great. New listing inventory is still in the positive 14.4%. So it's, it's staying strong. Um, normally we see gains in Riverside and San Bernardino County, right? Because you see newer properties uh, being built out there. We have definitely more builders in Riverside and San Bernardino County. Um, so we normally see more new listing inventory out in those areas. However, I think in LA County, we saw gains and in Orange County, we saw gains. So we are seeing that uh, new listing inventory is outpacing last year, which we definitely need, right? And we needed to continue to do that in order for it to catch up to demand at some point. All right, let's go to average active price. Average active price has gone down 3.6% over last, over last month and has gone up 3.9% over last year. So definitely um, the average active price sellers are asking 3.9% higher than they did last year, which is completely normal, is great. They are receiving, however, 7% increases over last year, okay? Um, so they're asking 3.9, but they're receiving 7%, which again, you're in single digit appreciation, um, anywhere between like the four and 7% has been considered normal. Um, so that is still a good number. 7% appreciation is not astronomical, right? It's not astronomical. It's not as dramatic as, um, Orange County. So Riverside County definitely keeping within the normal ranges. Months of inventory has gone down 6.9% over last month. We were at 2.9 months of inventory last month. We're at 2.7 months of inventory this month. Overall, 37.4% increase because last year, well, last year we had 1.9 months of inventory. This year we are at 2.6 months of inventory. So Riverside County, definitely inventory is climbing. You guys know that four months of inventory, when you hit that mark, you are considered um, approaching that normal market. Okay, normal market meaning supply and demand are sitting even with each other right? You, you've got some equality within supply and demand, all right? Um, so um, so definitely uh, getting there at 2.6 months of inventory is much better 
than what we're seeing in, in um um in Orange County when they're sitting underneath the one month or underneath that one point um seven month mark. So that's great. All right, average days on market is down 7.3%. So we were at 41 days on market last month. We are at 38 days on market currently, just as, again, first six days of the month. Um, overall, a 12.5% decrease. So last year, we were at 48 days on market. Currently, we are at 42 days on market. All righty. So average days on market in Riverside County, properties are staying on the market a little bit longer. But take it from somebody who's looking and putting in offers in both counties, Riverside and San Bernardino County, um, this, this number can be so deceiving because those houses are still flying off the market, or is it just me? Uh, the properties that we're looking at are flying off the market. All right, so um, sold versus original list price is a 1% decrease. Last month, we were at 98% of list price. Currently, sellers are receiving 97% of their list price. And that is, again, just the first six days of the month, overall a 1% increase. So last year, sellers were getting 96% of list price, and currently they're getting 97% of list price. So again, that is a good sign for sellers. Sellers are happy. They're getting 97% of their list price. And most of them, um, you know, depending on the area, right, are, are can be getting 100%, 101% of their list price. Last county of the day, let's talk about San Bernardino County. San Bernardino County for sale properties has gone up 10.2% over last month, 33.9% over last year, same time frame in July, okay? And overall, a 33.9% increase on for sale properties, which is great. San Bernardino County is seeing some big increases in for sale property inventory still staying on the market. Sold properties has gone down 7 point, I'm sorry, has gone up 7.8% over last month. 45.3% um, over last year, same time frame in July. However, it has gone down slightly 3.1% um, over last year overall, okay? So sold properties, properties that have actually closed escrow, okay, has gone down 3.1% over last year. So we'll keep an eye on that, right? Because we wanna, we want, these are our three major indicators. We really wanna see those in the green, um, because that that is like how our market is doing, how how the San Bernardino sp specifically market is doing. Um, and right now, basically, sales are down overall to the tune of 3.1%. Now, that's not a huge amount. Um, however, if it continues to compound, um, then obviously, then then it can jump into a, a bigger amount, right? So we'll we'll keep an eye on that. Hendits are down 14.1% over last month um, and 4.3% increase over last year, same time frame in July, and a 2.2% decrease overall. So properties that have actually gone into escrow has gone down 2.2% um, over last year, okay? So again, we want to keep our eye on these things because we definitely want to follow our market um, and see how the market is moving, right? We want to see how the market is moving. Last year, people said that sales were going to be down overall. So far, if you were to collectively look at all four major counties, we are actually in the green, um, more than likely on all of our three major trend lines. However, because of San Bernardino and Riverside County, um, we actually are starting to see some decreases. So we'll keep an eye on those things. New listing inventory is down 29% over last uh, month. Um, and over last year, we're looking at a 13.7% increase. So new listing inventory in all of our counties is still strong, which is great. And to the tune of 13.7% here in San Bernardino County. So we are seeing an infusion of new listing inventory um, as compared to last year. So that is good. We need to continue to, um, uh, we, we need to continue to bring new listings um, to the market. Um, and outpaced last year because last year was a huge deficit in, in inventory and we're still in an inventory um, uh, shortage. So we definitely need to continue to see inventory gains, right? So average active price, average active price is down 0.6%. So that's not much at all over last month um, and a 2% um, increase over last year. 
So the average active price in San Bernardino County has gone up 2%, which just means sellers are asking for 2% higher than they did last year, which is not much at all. Um, you know, if you're looking in San Bernardino County, that means that on average, you know, um, house prices just have not seen this huge increase um, over last year, which is great, okay, for our buyers. Um, they are receiving, however, 5.4% higher than they did last year, okay? Average sales price, average sold price has gone up 5.4% over last year, again, which is great um, as compared to the other counties that we've seen, right? Um, so 5.4% is normal appreciation. Um, and again, sellers are still happy because they are seeing positive gains uh, over last year. Let's look at months of inventory. I think this is the highest um, among the counties of months of inventory. So we are looking at 3.6 months of inventory, no change over last month, right? Um, we were at 3.6 months of inventory last month. We're there now. Um, overall, however, it is a 36.3% increase because last year, this time frame, we were at 2.5 months of inventory, 2.5 months. Now we're at 3.4. So definitely San Bernardino County is, is seeing, you know, getting up there in the months of inventory um, and hopefully we'll see a little bit more normalization um, in San Bernardino County, okay? All right, average days, average days on market has gone down 5.9% over last month. We were at 34 days on market last month. We're at 32 days on market currently. And then overall, a 15.2% decrease. We were at 46 days on market last year at this time frame. We are at 39 days on market currently. So versus original list price has gone down 4%. So we were at 100% of list price last month. They are getting 96% of list price currently. Again, not much to, to fuss about because it's just the first six days of the market. We'll continue to monitor that. Overall, however... They were, it's a 1% increase. Sellers were getting 97% of list price last year. They're getting 98% of list price now. So that is great. Again, sellers are happy. They're getting 98% of their list price. Their um, uh, their sold price has gone up uh, 5%. So definitely sellers are happy in San Bernardino County. Any questions about what we just talked about, our trends? This is the time if you want to come off mute, got, let me know. No, we good? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Jill. All right. Upcoming events, guys. Upcoming events. We have got um, group coaching today at noon. All righty. Group coaching today at noon with Diana Carbajal. We have got our tech workshop on Wednesday uh, with Martha. I've got to check in with Martha. She's been on vacation. We've missed her We've missed her, truly missed her. Um, we've got conversations in real play at 9 a.m. in the morning with Diana. We have got regional tech. So if you want to know how to customize your website's navigation bar, um, that is going to be tomorrow at 3. That is online only. Um, and then we've got 6 p.m. with Eileen here in the office. Um, and if you want to do tech training. So for those of you who need to know how to use command, We've got our own Eileen, and she is a tech guru. She can help you to learn how to use command. Um, and it is so important, you guys, that we use our technology more now than it ever has been. Wednesday, Thursday, we've got our broker hour with Ed. He's going to be teaching the BRBC basics. The BRBC is the buyer rep agreement, okay? Buyer broker rep agreement. And then on um, Thursday at 10, he's going to be teaching um, the BRBC, the basic and the additional forms, the SPBB, uh, the cancellation, and um, other forms that you need to know. That This is all related to the NAR changes, okay? All related to that. So he's teaching us about this. He's gonna be breaking it down. So we need you guys to be in these classes because when we want you to be super prepared. When it hits, you're not like, oh my God, oh my God, I've never seen this before. No, in this office, we are gonna be ready to go because we it will be... Um, it's going to be trained. We're going to be trained on this stuff, but you got to show up, right? You got to show up. So that's 10 o'clock on um, Wednesday and Thursday. And then we've got Diana's hosting a special class on how to fill out. Remember Ed, our tech workshop. 
up oh, where's that how to fill out the residential purchase agreement and that's five to seven on wednesday how to fill out the residential purchase agreement five to seven with diana so make sure that you guys attend this if you have never filled out a residential purchase agreement you this should be mandatory for you um if you have and you want a refresher attend this class okay diana is um been in this business for a long time. She knows what she's doing. And then on Thursday, we have Dow for Dollars with Victor. Um, and he is going to be um, talking about the, um, he's been talking about expired. So for those of you who really wanted to get into expireds or looking for right now business, Victor is your guy. Victor lives with his headset on. He's in his office all day calling. Um, so when he says Dow for Dollars, this is something that he does every day. So definitely, you know, you know, you should be learning from people who do this. So definitely take advantage of that. And we also have a lunch and learn on Friday. And I don't have a flyer for it, so I'm going to head back to this. We have a lunch and learn on Friday um, at 12 o'clock, talking about 1031 exchanges. Now, this was actually uh, requested by some of you that wanted to learn about 1031 exchanges. So definitely be here on Friday at 12 o'clock. And I'm so sorry, Thursday, Pavin has finished you guys in, um, I think it's Panorama City. He has finished the townhome um, development project that he's been working on. And he would love us to do a walkthrough um, on Thursday at 12 o'clock. He is selling this product. Before he told us that he was going to be, um, that he was actually gonna be um, holding it, but he is not. He is going to sell these six units and we have first dibs before they even go to market. So this is a great opportunity. I'm We're gonna be getting you guys more details. So please be looking at your emails, your text messages and or Facebook because we're gonna get this out to you guys. Those of you who want to go through the tour and learn more about um, the pricing and learn more about what's offered with the um, with the properties, this is a great opportunity, okay? All right, let's keep going. All right, industry news. Got just a couple of things wanted to talk about. Um, Realtor.com um, backs buyer agency for underrepresented groups. I just wanted to show you guys that we do have a lot of backing and I think it's going to become more prevalent um, where you're going to see big names, big companies backing buyer agency um, and, and backing the buyer agent compensation because it is important. It is very important, especially for underrepresented groups, right? Um, and so I think that you are going to see more big names come out um, and say that, yes, sellers do, or or that, yes, sellers do need to pay buyer, rep buyer um, compensation because buyers right now, your big, your largest group of buyers are millennials, right? And millennials are saddled with a bunch of student loan debt um, and other debt because they are out of school now, right? Um, having children and so forth. And so they don't have a lot of down payment. They're using all of their down payment to get into homes. And I know I'm preaching to the choir um, and all that. And that's all that um, the realtor.com CMO, um, Mickey Newberg, Newberger was saying is that, you know what? Everyone needs to have a shot at being a homeowner, right? An equal shot at being a homeowner. And a part of that is being represented, having your interests properly represented. Um, and, and that's important. That's critical. And the people who are going to be hurt by this new uh, uh, law is, is underrepresented groups, those groups that do not have the means, right? And have historically not had the means. Um, and have been getting in by grant programs and down payment assistance programs and so forth. And they're not going to have the means to pay a buyer's agent, which means they could potentially um, just be using a seller agent, which we all know typically represents the seller. I had an um, a, a agent this weekend call me um, and the seller wrote up an offer for her buyer. And now granted, this was a, a, a bank owned property. Um, and so the the agent represented the bank, okay? Um, but he wrote wrote it up, and she called me, and she's like, Brandy, is it normal 
that the seller or that the buyer pay for the transfer taxes? And is it normal that the buyer pay for um, title fees? And I was like, no, it's not. Well, on the offer that this agent wrote up for my buyer, um, all the boxes were checked set a buyer. Why is that? Because they represent the seller, right? Because they're trying to do the best job for the seller. They're not looking out for that client as a buyer. They didn't even tell the buyer, well, it's not normal that you guys would pay this, but in order to be competitive, we're putting, you know, they didn't even have that conversation. They just checked the boxes, expected this buyer to sign. Thank God this buyer had an agent um, that they called and trusted and said, no, we're not going to use your agent. We're going to use our own agent. So, but that was crazy to me, um, but also just illustrates how um, normally seller agents are going to represent the seller. Okay. Any questions on this before I move on? Nope. Okay. All right. And then the other one, um, the other thing that I found interesting, I'm moving, moving you guys around. The other thing that I found interesting was just that by the numbers, which is again, real estate news, um, they were looking at the mid-year review of housing supply um, and where it's headed. Um, and they were just saying that there is very little chance that we're going to have like this inventory explosion this year uh, that yes, supply, and we can see it in our numbers, right? The supply is ticking up, that we are seeing that we are having more, um, and I'm going to stop the share now. We are having uh, more inventory come up, which is great. Um, however, it is not going to be um, some inventory explosion. We are going to see more foreclosures um, come on the market. We are. I'm already seeing that now. Um, more foreclosures hit the market. I actually have a client right now who we're trying to save it from foreclosure uh, by putting it on the market and hoping that we can get the uh, the, the trustee sale date postponed. Um, so the reality is, is yes, we are definitely seeing where there are um, there are upticks, and we are. And, and the article was saying that through the summertime we should see more inventory coming on the market, but just not enough um, that it is going to make a huge dent. Um, they are saying also that with interest rates uh, straddling that 7%, that that is holding back um, a lot of the sellers from um, putting their homes on the market. And we, you know, we already know that. Um, so really the article didn't give us any new information necessarily other than um, that the foreclosure market is actually heating up a bit, but again, it won't make significant increases, um, you know, to supply. Okay. So we have got to continue to get out there and create our own supply by talking with our sellers or talking with our homeowners, uh, and just making sure that they're informed, right. And that we answer their questions. Um, the other thing is, is if you're looking for right now inventory, you've got to look at for sale by owners. You've got to look at expireds. You've got to look at folks that have had, um, you know, divorce, death, um, those type of situations, because those are the people that will be in a situation where they want to sell or they need to sell. OK, um, so right now it's find the motivated. And that's just the reality. It's find the motivated. Don't look for folks um, that are not motivated or don't have a real reason to move because they won't. You got to be looking for the people that are ready to go and that need to go, okay? Um, folks that are relocating and, and need to move to a different city, state, area, right? Um, th that's where, you know, people who are having babies and they they need a bigger spot because, hey, we're we're in a two-bedroom home and, and now we're busting out the seams, right? So, and that means keeping in touch with people in your life um, because you won't know about what's going on in their lives if you're not in communication and relationship. All right. All right. Brandy, guys. Brandy. Yes. Can we get um, some uh, social media artwork or something from Pavin? Because if we all hit our databases with an email on the pictures of that stuff and say it's not even on uh, MLS yet, we might be able to, you know, get to, get it sold before it even has a chance to get there. Absolutely. Absolutely, Oscar. We are working on that. Pavin is actually working on um, working on a flyer 
um, and some get providing us with some photos and everything. Um, he's he's got some cleanup to do over there, so he's working on that. So yes, absolutely, we will definitely get that out to you guys. That's a great that's a great suggestion, and we are on it. Cool. The yeah. commissions will be totally in house. Yes, wouldn't that be great? Keep it in house. Uh, that would be great. So uh, and he does he does pay a full commission. So that's awesome. Hey, Brandy. Yes, Chris. Hey, uh, a comment on these classes. They're really good. If you're not attending them, I highly recommend it because he teaches a really good class. He's really sharp, and I I have learned a lot from his classes. I think I can't say enough about his training. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks for that. I hope you guys all heard that. He said, you got to attend the classes. Shame on you if you're not, because you learn a lot. I'm telling you, he's a sharp Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. And I have a question while I have you, while you're having the phone okay. uh, on, the, on the call, because I, I talked to you about this property that eventually I'm going to get a listing on in uh, Friendly Hills. Will it matter much if it sells during the summertime or where it goes beyond the summertime? Will it make much difference up in that area? Um, the reality is, is that summertime is a hotter time for sales, right? As you get into fall and winter, um, uh, house prices in most markets level out. So if you, if they want to see, you know, more buyers, typically it is going to be during this time. Um, people during the holiday season do like everybody else. The, the, the whole world slows down in November and December and January, right? Because the reality is, is that everybody's focused on family and focused on the holidays. So um, it, it does slow down. Um, Friendly Hills is no different. That okay. Yeah. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping to get it, the list, listing going within the next month, month and a half. So just waiting on them to finish up what they got to do. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're better. You're welcome. Any other questions, guys? We good? Yes. Thank you, All Brandy. Right. You're welcome. Thank you guys for hanging in there. Go have a great week. Thanks, Thank Brandy. You Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys.